a quick video to show how to do uh, reading command line arguments from a program in Java. Uh, many of you have taken your intro classes programming Java uh, using an environment like Eclipse or NetBeans or some sort of uh, language that just sort of has a build and go button. You haven't had very much experience running Java programs from the command line or writing Java programs that actually use arguments from the command line. So the first thing that I want to talk about is just in general what command line arguments look like. And if you've ever used a terminal like this and used bash or any other Unix shell, you've actually used command line arguments quite a bit. You know, you have a program like ls to show your directory contents and you can provide arguments like the minus a or minus l flag to change the behavior of that program. So we're going to be doing a similar kind of thing where we're writing a little Java program that takes command line arguments and just displays them to the screen. All right, so we need to write a little program. And we're just going to use Emacs to edit our files instead of an, uh, a bigger IDE, but you can use any kind of IDE that you like. My Emacs will take one second to open because it's running remotely. Great, so now that we have our Emacs window, we're just going to write a very simple Java program. So. Um, I'm going to name the class the same name as my actual Java file. And give it a main method. And now we can start to look at this main method. And typically, in your earlier classes, you may have just remembered basically the mantra, public static void main string bracket bracket args, as that's what I type for the main method. But since we're actually going to be using this arguments variable, uh, we can start to piece apart this main method and really talk about what each of the words mean. Uh, so this public keyword really, you know, like you've learned in your classes, means that this method is accessible to any class uh, outside of this arguments class. So that's just a normal access specifier. This static keyword refers to the fact that we don't need an instance of an arguments object to call the main method. And that's important since it's the entry point for our program. Void, hopefully you remember, means that our main method doesn't return any, any value. And main is a special name for a function. Uh, we can only have one main method inside of our program. And main, the name, denotes this is the entry point for our program. Now what's exciting is, since we're going to be taking command line arguments, we're really going to see this args parameter that we've always typed you know, in action. And essentially what this uh, array of strings is going to contain is all of the arguments that we type on the command line. So what we're going to do in this program is basically print out the information about args so that we can kind of understand how it's working and use it in our program. So the first thing that I'm going to print is actually the number of arguments that is in my args variable. So I'm just going to do a normal println. So we're going to print the number of command line arguments is args.length. And then from there, we also need to see what those actual arguments are. So we're just going to do a little for loop. And inside of that for loop, we're actually going to do some more printing. I'm going to print that argument. So let's do args. So arg sub i is arg sub i. That way when we print it out, we can kind of see it in the way that we're picturing it in the program. All right. So now we've got our little simple Java program and we're going to go back to the terminal and compile it. And hopefully we're lucky so we don't have any compiler errors and now we can run it. So we're used to running our Java programs like this. We just say Java to invoke the Java virtual machine and our arguments class. And we can see that it says the number of command line arguments that we gave it is zero. 
which shouldn't really be surprising unless you come from a C or, you know, C++ Unix programming kind of background where normally arg sub zero would be the name of the program that we're running, like arguments. Uh, in Java, they actually don't give you the name of the program in that arguments array. So that's something that's a little bit different. So the only thing that's going to come out of our arguments array is say if we run Java arguments with hello, goodbye, and foo. Now we can start to see that we've actually passed these three command line arguments uh, and they're, they're parsed separated by white space. So since we put spaces between them, they're different arguments. So we see things like, all right, arg sub zero has our hello, arg sub one has our goodbye, and arg sub two has our foo. And they're, the, since they're all separated by spaces, they're different arguments, which may bring you to the question of what if I wanted hello, goodbye, foo to all be one argument. You can put it in the command line in quotes so that it becomes sort of one entity. And then we have one command line argument with hello, goodbye, foo. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, whatever command line arguments we put on the command line when we run our Java program end up in this argument array. Typically, you won't see code like this in a regular program. Uh, you'll see something more of the style of the programmer expecting some specific arguments being given to the program and checking to make sure that there are the right number of arguments. So something like if args.length is not equal to two, uh, something like, and normally you'll print this as standard error instead of standard out, uh, but you know, depending on your needs, you may just print it to standard out just because you, you don't care and you just want it to be output. So what you'll typically see is some sort of error about, you know, an invalid number of command line arguments. Uh, if you're trying to write a nice user-friendly program, you might write something more like a little usage statement. So we'd say something like Java arguments something like this, so that the user actually, if they get this error message, they know how it's supposed to be used. Hopefully you would replace arg1 and arg2 with something more useful, like what those arguments should actually be. Uh, depending on how complicated of a little Java program that you're writing, and there might be different numbers of arguments that you can provide the program, uh, you can either write more complicated if statements, actually we should remember real quick that once we print out that there was bad usage, we should actually exit the program too. Let's make sure that this compiles real quick. Oops, we want args.length, not arg.length. All right, great. So now we can see if we run it with our one argument, it actually says, no, sorry, we need two arguments. As I was saying, if you have a more complicated kind of Java program that need, can take a variable number of arguments, uh, you can either write more complicated checking here for your program, or there are actually some libraries around that will help you sort of make this more complicated set of flags and things like that, but we'll leave that for another video. So, but if you're just doing something simple, you can sort of just check to make sure that you've got the right amount of arguments uh, at the beginning, exit if you don't, and then merrily continue with your program, assuming you have the right arguments for the rest of the time. Great. Uh, so. Please feel free to post any comments to this video if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.